to you today about Faber Castell and Dixon Ticonderoga and how globalization affected them and how their varying responses to globalization led to either their success or failure in the long term. Uh, to answer this uh, question, we're first of all going to give you a brief introduction to the pencil industry and to both companies. And then we're going to approach answering key questions such as what is globalization and how did it affect the pencil manufacturing industry? How did each of the two companies respond? Where did Dixon's management go wrong? And what key management lessons can be learned from uh, either their success or their failure? So starting with an introduction to the pencil industry, there are a great number of very important companies and brands from all over the world, and lots of these now have factories globally. Some originated 100 to 200 years ago, and several more are approaching their century mark as well. The industry contains a high level of international trade. This can mostly be seen in the supply of raw base materials or component parts needed to produce pencils, but also within the trade of the finished goods themselves. The management of wood cost and wood technical performance from the manufacturers of pencils to the sharpening and the finished pencils are critical components to the competitiveness of the industry. Much technology and expert technical know-how is involved in making pencils, and in particular the high quality pencils. Today, the competitive forces of innovation, globalization, trade policies, and regulatory environments are transforming the pencil industry. So, Faber-Castell was founded in 1761 at Stein near Nuremberg by Kaspar Faber. Uh, at that time, most pencil manufacturing companies were set up in Nuremberg, which was at that time the global capital of pencil manufacturing. And for Faber-Castell to set up in uh, Stein gave them a competitive advantage over the uh, rivals because there were less uh, barriers over the production and less regulations. In 1900, the heiress of the Faber dynasty married a Count of Castell, which is how the company came to be called Faber Castell. Uh, the company has been in the Faber family for eight generations, and its current CEO is Anton Wolfgang von Faber Castell. This is a picture of him at the 250th anniversary of the company. Dixon Ticonderoga was founded in 1795 and is based in Heathrow, Florida. It is one of America's oldest corporations. In 2005, it was acquired by Fila SPA, which is uh, an Italian um, stationary products manufacturer. The current CEO since 2010 is Timothy M. Gomez, and he has brought the strategy of Dixon Ticonderoga back towards its core values of manufacturing school supplies. So what is globalization? The simple definition is the global flow of money, products, information, service, and ex expertise and people. It's the dismantling <coughs> of trade barriers between nations and the changes that this, that this will bring to people and cultures. The move towards globalization is due in large part to the technologies that enable us to connect with people and other nations. Increasing worldwide, worldwide integration of economies, culture, political, religious, and social systems. It creates a wider pool of skilled labor and the opportunity for a much wider customer base. China broke free from a century planned economy in 1990s and quickly became an economic powerhouse due to its size of population. Also, it had a huge commitment and tremendous resources to modernization and economic growth. Now, China has a mixture of author authoritarian control and free market practices. The problem for both companies that we are investigating was the pace of globalization and in particular, how they reacted to China's low-cost pencil industry due to their low-cost labor. Faber Castle and Dixon Tikan Rule could be used as a great example of a very, very response towards globalization. Faber Castle retained their company's Hinterstand IDO, which, which is the small and medium-sized German enterprises that are highly focused on specific production, export-oriented with a long-term profitability in mind. They also value their workers and provide extensive training and equal care of all staff in every fabric cast production facility. The company aims at continuously innovating and improving on everyday products such as the pencils. And a great example of that is the gray triangular pencil with dust that was introduced by fabric Castle in the beginning of the century. Another business solution that they have take over is producing makeup pencils for the cosmetic companies. And here's a video of an uh, interview given by Anton Wolfgang von Castle.
constantly optimize the product. And if we have, we have products which may cause a yawn pencils, but we have to stick to it. And we have to try within this frame to improve, to, con to constantly optimize the product. And if you have the curiosity, if you have the right people, you always find things to improve. The big advantage which we have as a Mittelstand uh, company is that we are not publicly traded, we are not listed. As soon as you are listed, you have to undergo the rules of being publicly traded, among others, quarterly earnings per shares. You know, with this kind of short-term view, which is constantly over your head, I would say as a threat, but as a challenge, you don't have so much time anymore for some unusual thoughts regarding the far future. I have taken over the company from my father, he has taken over from his grandfather, etc., a generation. So it's in some ways not my company, it's something which I carry on during my lifetime. So I have a vision for the next generation. How I achieve it occasionally, I don't know, because business is changing, but the de determination to pass it on and not <coughs> sell the company and buy a yacht is certainly very strong in, in, in my mind. Cover Capital didn't compromise with quality nor drop their sounds of production or materials. They even created a luxurious collection called Graphon Faber Castell and thus established the firm as a symbol of quality. They introduced environmentally friendly strategy and sustainability projects that is planting trees for every wood that is being used for production of pencils. And from 1992 to 1993, uh, Grant went through a revitalization of, the image, of its image and also its market popularity rose due to the new look of the company. They established production center, centers throughout the world in Eastern Europe, Asia, and South America to expand globally. Dixon and Ticonderoga, on the other hand, went into another direction. They first started by winning government support for heavy dumping duties on the Chinese pencil manufacturers, but that didn't help them a lot because Chinese were able to drop the price even lower and continue to import in the America. They aim at cutting costs in various ways and their strategy to compete with the Chinese manufacturers by dropping their price of production. They bought razors from Korea, not their usual American supplier, and also switched from the expensive California wood to a cheaper, cheaper Indonesian wood. All of this resulted in a drop of quality of the product. The, they, they then went to a strategic movement of production facilities from the US to Mexico in order to get cheaper labor costs. And they closed many of their facilities in, and moved even into China to produce their all of the wood in there. Afterwards, the Mexican production was even strictly closed because they had very low costs of production and this only one Mexican facility was working at the end. They attempted innovative production, but it failed because their recycled pencils were not able to go to the market. They cut a lot of employees when sales began to fall and also sold a lot of industrial divisions of the company and concentrated entirely on consumer products. To summarize our opinion, we should say that we believe that the reason for the success of Faber Castle and failure of Dixon Tikanderoga is accounted directly to the responses to globalization that were made by their management teams. Dixon Tikanderoga and Faber Castle found themselves in the same situation but they have reacted in completely different ways. Being unprepared for globalization uh, and its challenges, Dixon and the Kandaroga company preferred to compete with new entrants throughout uh, an aggressive cost pattern strategy and price competition. The result of using this marketing strategy, which is called cost competition and cost leadership, was failure. Faber Castle, in its turn, took the other path, focusing on brand image and uh, keeping the same quality of their business, they had kept the same price for their products and they even developed the uh, products that are even more <clears throat> that are even more expensive 
they have managed to take an advantage over the globalization because they have expanded to other countries, they have entered new markets such as cosmetics industry, and it all has strengthened their position as market leaders. As can be seen, globalization challenged both of these companies, but Faber Castle managed not only to survive, but also to uh, use it for its own benefit. And Dixon Ticonderoga, however, failed to do the same. We suppose that the main reason for failure was the successful decisions of managerial team of Dixon. They had made a lot of mistakes, and we are going to tell a little bit more about them. Dixon Ticonderoga management made a lot of decisions that turned them favorable for the company's future. They, the first thing is that they proved incapable to shift from a national to international company and to concentrate on the global market. They failed to respond to globalization quickly enough and to retain their market share. Also, they didn't use their position as market leaders and as brand name to fight off competition because they were unaccustomed to competition in their own sector. They entered the predestined to failure cost competition with the Chinese manufacturers that had the cheap labor and the cheap raw materials at hand and also lowering the quality of the production materials to accommodate the cost cutting strategy cost them a lot of their market shares and customer popularity. We suppose that all those mistakes could have been easily avoided by simple actions by management of Dixon. First of all, they should have used more planning tools as it would allow them to set up realistic goals and to provide itself with clear vision on what is happening around them. It would be extremely helpful as the absence of effective plan on further development led to slow decision making and then to rash actions that were not probably the best in current situation. Besides effective planning, Dixon lacked usage of managerial instruments such as SWOT and FASL analysis which stand for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats and political, environmental, social, technological, legal and economical. Uh, those analyses just collect the data about the external environment and <coughs> internal factors. And this data, as you all know, is vital during the periods of great changes such as globalization. Due to the absence of this information, Dixon hasn't used it, its position as market leader and failed to capitalize on the opportunities of globalization. Finally, uh, as we already mentioned, Dixon Second Road decided to follow cost leadership strategy and it is obviously was less successful than differentiation strategy that was used by Faber Castle Company. Data about current business environment should have been used in order to benefit from globalization and shift from national to international company during the globalization period. Faber Castle and Dixon to Condor Road had a very contrast experiences. Castle managed to combat the challenges of globalization and manage their company successfully whereas Dixon to Condor Road wasn't as successful. However, the main lesson we can learn from Faber Castle's success and Dixon to Condor Road's failure is that as a manager you must always be following. You must always try to control the current situation as much as possible considering both internal and external factors. Dixon to Condor Road's major downfall came up due to lack of planning. They did not have a SWOT analysis, a PESL analysis or a forces by forces model. If you come to you would have analyzed the market better, you would have been able to prepare yourself and be better equipped to combat the challenges of globalization, as well as seize the opportunities that come with it. Instead, all of it, you spent all this time focusing on one aspect, cutting prices. You must also try to control the future as much as possible to predict the future environment. What's about to happen and what trends are developing? In all industries, the market is constantly changing. New entrants are arriving, customers are constantly increasing their bargaining power. If you stay alert and research the market, this will enable you to see what challenges and opportunities are about to come. This will also allow you to take full advantage of them, like Faber Castle, who highlighted the history, luxury, and quality of his brand, the main thing that separated him from the Chinese pencil industry. Finally, you must benefit from your position as market leader, develop and introduce new products and improve current ones. Make strong connections with customers and do not underestimate the power of external factors. Faber Castle did not try to compete in price with the Chinese, instead they chose to market their products as being of the high quality and brought out a range of luxury stationery and wallets. Therefore, we can learn from this contrast experience of differentiating, creating new products, and targeting niche markets, driving new revenues, and this is a successful way to manage a business when they attract new entrants and competitive revenues in an industry. Finally, it is not only profit increasing and planning skills we can learn from Faber Castell, but also his ethics. Faber Castell manages his business in an eco-friendly manner. He plants seedlings in replacement for every tree he cuts down, cuts out and, in, and creating a sustainable and renewable source for his products. The Faber-Castell's forests and parks have all been approved by the FSC 
a committee which includes organisations such as Greenpeace. This is another example of Faber-Castell's thinking about the future. Furthermore, it is not only the environment that Faber-Castell Faber is conscious of, but also his workers. Faber-Castell adopts the market mechanism and has shown high level of social commitment since the business began. Faber-Castell set up one of his first companies, the company's health insurance scheme, and children's crashes. The company also built houses and founded schools for its employers. Therefore, we can conclude that the contrasting experiences of these two companies, two, two, pencil, two pencil giants, can provide us with key lessons and also an understanding that there, many, that there are many components needed to become a great manager. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening and we